Hey Urban Homies, it's your girl Sarita, also known as City Girl Gone Green. In this video, I'm going to show you how I dry can potatoes three different ways. But first, let me point out that dry canning is a rebel canning technique and is not FDA approved. So make sure you do your own research before trying this. All right, so I'm going to be using four different types of potatoes today. So I'm going to be using Yukon potatoes in two different ways. I'm going to be using the russet potatoes, and I'm also going to be using purple and red. So the russet potatoes are the ones that I'm actually going to be using for french fries. I'm going to be using the Yukon potatoes also for hash browns or maybe um, O'Brien style potatoes. And then I'm also going to be using Yukon purple and red also kind of for like the roasted potatoes, but you know, the, the multicolored roasted potatoes, which I absolutely love. So I've got a large bowl and the potatoes soaking. They've been soaking for about an hour now. And I also have this really big stock pot. This is actually my um, water bath canning pot. It's pretty big. So I have some Yukons and some Retsits and some russet potatoes in here as well. And what I'm actually gonna do right now is just scrub all the potatoes and get them nice and clean. Before Okay, so now to the fresh water, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of the citric acid powder in order to help preserve the potatoes and keep them from turning, you know, that oxidized brown color that happens when, you know, potatoes, apples, things like that, they, you know, they turn. So, a little citric acid powder should do the trick. I want you to get a few of your fries cut. Um, you're gonna wanna kinda test them to see if they actually fit. And I'm not gonna put this inside because my jars have already been sterilized. So basically, I'm just kinda holding it up. Now, what I've heard is that these kinda shrink down a little bit. So I'm not too worried, you know, for this particular ratio, I just wanna make sure that I don't have a bunch of fries that are way too tall to actually fit in these pint-sized jars. So honestly, I think that the potatoes that I got were a little bit too big. If this actually works out and I do this again, I would actually get more like medium, closer to smaller, like medium size potatoes so that I'm not actually having to cut off like pieces of the potatoes, the ends of the potatoes in order to make sure that the actual fries fit in the jar. But that's just something that you learn as you go. Maybe a tip for you guys, don't get potatoes quite this large because they won't fit in a pint-sized jar. All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you that the water with the fries or the rest of the potatoes is already, you know, you can see like the little murkiness. That's starch coming off of the potatoes. And of course, underneath here, I've got the hash browns that I put in here first. So I will definitely be um, rinsing these and separating the potatoes from the french fries when it's time and then letting the french fries do their second soak by themselves but look at the difference in the the starch in the water like this is the trio for my roasted peppers that i'm going to be or excuse me my roasted potatoes that i'm going to be canning later on and there's hardly anything the water is like super clear as opposed to this water and this is just from adding the russet potatoes in Okay guys, so I just chopped up my very last french fry. So now what I'm going to do is allow the potatoes that I cut earlier to go ahead and soak for the remaining hour. Then I will dump that water and then go from there to try to get most of that starch off. I'll do the same thing with these french fries, of course. And then I will be dumping that water and then letting them soak for an additional hour. Um, because like I said before, the rest of the potatoes um, apparently have so much more starch in them. And then to avoid having like a soggy, watery mess inside of the mason jars, we want to get out as much starch as possible. So I will bring you guys back when it is time to do the first rinse. So the fries have been rinsed and now it's time for their second soaking in order to remove as much starch as possible. In the meantime, I'm gonna let the hash browns and roasted potatoes air dry for about 15 minutes, then towel blot them to help remove excess moisture.
Next, I'm gonna use some avocado oil in my own blend of pink, sea, and kosher salt to lightly season the potatoes. And with clean hands, I'm gonna put the potatoes in my prepared jars. Okay, so I made six jars or six pint-sized jars of what will be my roasted potatoes. I still have hash browns and of course the french fries that also need to can. So what I'm gonna end up doing is probably freezing these because these are the jars that I actually have left and prepared. So I wasn't exactly sure how much of anything I would have. So I just wanna make sure that I have enough jars to can hash browns as well as french fries and I can always get some more jars and do this again later on after I freeze whatever leftovers I actually have. All right, so what I'm going to do next is wipe off the rims with a little bit of vinegar. And then, and this is hot water. The lids have been sitting in hot water. Then I'm gonna put the, the lids onto each jar. And then I'm going to put the bands on top of that and then move these over to the overall canning station as I prepare for the next batch of potatoes or hash browns that will actually need to be placed in jars. So it has processed for the full amount of time. Come down to zero pressure. That should take about 10, 15 minutes. And then I will remove the jars and get ready for the next batch. And that folks is how I dry can potatoes three different ways.